Hi, welcome back to another CSS of Basics video where I show you the basics of uh, cascading style sheets or CSS. In this video I'm going to talk to you about borders and the border property. Uh, we have several options for the border property mostly centering around the styles um, and we'll go through some of those things here. Alright so the first thing uh, we have an H1 tag here and we have a little bit of padding on the body as well just to pull it away from the edge. So let's take a look at the border property. Now the makeup of the border property is we write it like this. This is the shorthand. There's lots of, uh, you could break this up into individual parts if you wanted to. Um, but the shorthand that you're basically going to use for most of the things that you do on the web is called border, colon, and then we have three values. And the values, the first one is the uh, width or the weight of the line. So we'll say one pixel. You could use anything. You could use a hundred or a thousand, or uh, you could use one M or rims. So you can use pretty much any uh, value that you wanted to uh, measurement. I'm sorry. And then the second value is the style, and so we're just going to say solid. Most of the time, you're going to be using a solid line. And then the third one <coughs> is the color, and so then we can set we can set this to be any sort of uh, hexadecimal color as well so um, that's the hexadecimal color for red uh, you could use an RGBA color where you set that hexadecimal to um, an alpha value so that the line is a little bit oh I can't do that here I gotta do that in a different uh, style of program I guess okay uh, but it is possible if you're using SAS or something else to do uh, RGBA uh, so we have our line and we have it colored um, that looks good and so let's go through some of these styles I told you that there are different types of border styles uh, so the first style is none so you could set the border to none and it won't show up at all um, there's also one called the outset and you can see that the outset looks like it's raised up a little bit <coughs> uh, inset looks like it's going to be sunken down into the page a little bit ridge looks like it's kind of bumped like there's a bump uh, like a ridge <coughs> and then groove is the opposite of ridge so it looks like there's kind of a, a negative bump down into the page you can do a double line like this so it's two lines of equal space or equal width I'm sorry and then you could also do a dash line so the dash dotted and solid these are probably what you're going to be uh, doing most of the time uh, the dash line kind of has a long line and then a space in between each of the long lines the dotted is a dot with a space in between so you can see there's a little difference and then the regular old solid line. Uh, so, <clears throat> one of the things that we can also do is instead of just having a border all the way around the box, we can actually do individual um, borders. So, when we do all of them together, we obviously are going to get a box, uh, but if we take them off one at a time you can see that we can take off or add the border right property so it's border dash in whichever direction you want to add um, let's just go through these you can see more of an additive effect so if you wanted a top border <coughs> excuse me you could do that or uh, if you want top and bottom or let's say you wanted left and right so we could create a left border and a right border uh, you've seen this sometimes with um, sometimes when you're creating a call out or you're creating a block quote you know where you want to quote someone real big uh, and one thing you notice here is that there's no space right there's no space uh, between these two elements between the border and the element itself and the way that we can create some space inside the border is to put some padding 
onto our element. If we do that, it'll create some space here. So this is padding, and outside in between the different elements is margin. So if you had something butting up against uh, this H1 here, you could put a little margin, and it would move, it would put some space in between those two elements, either above or below or beside. Uh, so that would be how you create a little bit of space. Okay, we have one more. We have one more uh, part of the border property, and I'll just show you very quickly. Let's just take that off. <coughs> and let's do just the single, the solid line. And you see how it's just a square shape here. What if we wanted to round off the borders a little bit? There is something called the border radius property. And the border radius property takes uh, some sort of numeric value. Uh, so it has to be a number. It actually has to be a number plus a unit. So we could say something like 30 pixels. And you can see that it rounds off the corners automatically. This is relatively new in CSS over the last uh, maybe five years. Um, if you do something a little less harsh than 30, you can see that we get nice little, just small rounded corners, right? So three pixels, five pixels, that's pretty good. Um, if you have an element that is equal width, so let's say our H1, <coughs> let's say the width is 100 pixels and the height is 100 pixels. Um, and then the font size is just regular. Okay, so we have kind of a square shaped thing here. <clears throat> Actually that's not a good one. Let's do something else. Let's do uh, P. Let's just let's do a paragraph with a uh, class of box. So when we do box, <clears throat> we say the height is 100 pixels. <coughs> Excuse me, and the width is 100 pixels. And the background color is um, red. It's fine. Okay, so we have a square box. And what we want to do is we want to make this a circle. So one of the ways that we can do that is through border radius. So we say border radius. And then if you do 50%, this will actually turn it into a circle. So it adds uh, kind of a mask over that. So if you had an image, a square image in here, it would kind of create a, a circular mask over the top of that. So this is um, one of the ways that people create uh, circles in their websites. So sometimes you'll see that with an image that has a circle around it, or it's a circular image. Um, that's most likely the way that they've done that in the CSS. So those are the tricks of the border property. Uh, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and I will get to them or if you have any comments I'd love to hear it and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.